I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on beta keto acids. Hi, I want to do a question today that I think is very important for the DAT exam, and that's involving what's called a beta keto acid. So come around and I'll show you some really good stuff. In this first example, you have a carboxy acid. And if I was to name this carboxy acid, I would start here as number one, two, three, four, so it would be a butanoic acid. On position number three is a carbonyl, which we would call oxo. So putting it all together, I would call number one, three oxo butanoic acid. Now, if you notice, if this is the main focus, the carbon next to the COOH group is alpha, and this carbon is beta. And since there is a carbonyl on the beta carbon, we call this, not a naming, but we just call it when we describe it, a beta keto acid. Likewise, number two, again, this is your focus. That's the COOH group. Think of that as your lead position. This is the alpha position, and this is the beta position. So I would call that a beta keto acid. So whenever you have a beta keto acid, they are notorious for decarboxylating when heated, meaning that you're gonna lose the CO2. So what I did in this example is to predict the products. I put in red, you can almost see the CO2. So all you would do is envision getting rid of the CO2, and then you just leave behind that H, and that H you put where the CH2 group is, and that will give you these two products. Let's try another one. On example number two, again, you can see the CO2. You heat it up, you lose the CO2, and then you're left with the cycloketone. How did this reaction happen? Let's have a quick look. All we want to do is do we want to remove CO2. Now, CO2, as you know, would look like this. You already have the C double bond O here. So all we got to do is we got to put in another double bond. So if this bond moves here, this bond moves here, and this bond opens up and moves here, that would give you this as a product. I hope you can see this move. Notice I made three movements simultaneously. Whenever six electrons are moving in a transition state, in advanced organic chemistry, we refer to that as a aromatic transition state. The important thing for you to understand is that those three movements allowed me to remove the CO2 and I get the enol. The enol is then going to be captured. Sometimes we don't put the acid step, but this is called a workup step. So all you're going to do is you're going to pick up an H plus and that will give a CH3 here. The bond moves down and then all you would simply do is just simply deprotonate it and that's the final product. I think for the dad exam, if you can complete the products, I think you're in good shape. But there's always the student who wonders, how the devil did the decarboxylation happen? I'm going to now show you a problem involving this type of reaction, and I think you're going to love it. And if we go over to this board here, we are going to do a reaction known as the acetoacetic ester synthesis. Don't worry about the name, but I want you to understand the chemistry. I'm going to take this molecule and I'm going to do five things. I'm going to treat it with sodium methoxide, then I'm going to add CH3I, then base, acid, and then I'm going to heat it up. Let's do step one and two together. NaOC2H5, what's that going to do? That's going to remove off the most acidic proton. And when you remove off the most acidic proton, I hope you can see that would give me this. And then this would simply capture the methyl group. And as you can see, we would simply alkylate the molecule and get product number two. Once we alkylated this by an SN2, you have base. What's base gonna do? It's gonna crack the ester down the middle. So when you crack the ester down the middle, you end up getting the carboxylate salt. And then step four would simply add an H, and now you got an acid. Now comes the grand finale. You're heating it. What happens? Well, what kind of acid is this? I'm hoping you remember what we just did. This is a beta keto acid. And because it's a beta keto acid, you lose the CO2, and 
where you lost the CO2, you put your H, and there's your final product. And as you guys can see, you get two butanone. This is a sure bad type of reaction for the DAT. We got one just like this in the DAT destroyer. Make sure you know it, and you may thank me someday. All right, I hope this clears up how to deal with beta keto acids and reactions such as the malonic ester synthesis or the acetoacetic ester synthesis dealing with these acids. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.